Okay, let's get uh, started. Welcome back. We're uh, let me finish talking a bit. We are uh, let's get started on the next chapter of the heart. Um, okay. Um, so uh, I can see that Okay, uh, so this is uh, so part of the cardiovascular system. So we three chapters in the cardiovascular system. We're going to have uh, um, blood vessels in it. Will be next chapter. So uh, with the heart. Uh, so what is the heart? Well, it's a pump. That's what it does. It pumps, but it's a really uh, sophisticated, um, uh, amazing pump. Uh, that can uh, adapt to changes. It pumps uh, what an average 72 times a minute for your entire life, for 80, 90, 100 years. Uh, it, uh, it adapts, it's really an amazing pump. Um, and, it's, and so, it, so the cardiovascular system is a delivery system. And the, the blood vessels are the pipes. Actually, so, Pretty sophisticated pipes, actually, but they are just plumbing and they have a pump. So, for the liver system, we have pump it and pipes. And so, this is going to perfuse organs. Well, perfusion of organs means bringing blood to the organ. Uh, so, this is going to bring big blood to all of the organs. All right. Why is this working? Oh, because it's not. So we have to, have to define these pipes, uh, blood vessels. Um, there are different types of, well, two basic types, um, arteries and veins. And uh, some people have mistaken the assumption that uh, arteries bring oxygen blood, carry oxygen blood, and veins carry the oxygen blood, but that's not the case. The definition um, of these two vessels determined by whether they're bringing blood away from the heart or to the heart. Arteries carry blood away from the heart, and veins carry blood to the heart. And it makes no difference whether it's oxygenated or deoxygenated. Right. Now, it's also another, what was called, called a uh, capillary, which is a small pulse of blood vessels. And they are the real, um, in a sense, functional vessels. This is where gas exchange, nutrient exchange, waste products are picked up. Okay. Uh, the the uh, cardiovascular system is really divided into two um, circulations, the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation, but they are connected to each other. So this is what's called a closed system. And the pump is the heart, as you mentioned. Uh, it's actually two pumps, uh, a pump on the uh, right-hand side of the heart and a pump on the left-hand side of the heart. And the, the pump on the right uh, sends uh, blood to the lungs, just, just to the lungs. And the uh, and then blood comes back from the lungs, goes into the left side of the heart, and the left side of the heart pumps blood to the whole rest of the body including some actually back to the lung. There are great vessels uh, which carry uh, uh, blood from the heart and to the heart. We call them great vessels and we're going to get to their names in a bit. Then there are uh, uh, one-way valves in the heart. We've got to make sure that the flow of blood through the cardiovascular system is one way. It just goes one way. Uh, it can take a little way. And uh, we have valves, we also have valves in veins, which we'll see later on. But there are valves in the, in the uh, heart that prevent the backflow of blood. Uh, of, uh, Here is a picture uh, uh, of the whole cardiovascular system, the heart and the blood vessels. And capillaries is where exchange uh, takes place. Of uh, well, in the lungs, is blood 
uh, it's gas. We have gas exchange in the lungs. The oxygen comes into the uh, progressive system in the lungs and CO2 leaves. Then uh, there's, a, there's a second uh, capital exchange in the uh, in, it's called the systemic uh, situation where uh, the, the where oxygen comes out of the blood into the tissues and CO2 um, comes in from the tissues in the blood. But we also have exchange of other things, also the exchange of nutrients. Uh, nutrients come out of the blood and go into the tissues. We have an exchange of waste products going the other direction from the uh, uh, from the, the cells into the cardiovascular system. And exchange of signaling molecules like uh, hormones and uh, and paraphrase. Okay. And they can go in either direction, from the blood into the cells or from the cells if it's, it's an endocrine gland into the blood. Okay. So here we, here we have uh, the two pumps. Um, West side and left side. So, uh, and each uh, uh, side of the heart has two chambers a uh, receiving chamber and a pumping chamber. Receiving, receiving chambers are the atria or atrium, it's singular. And the ventricle, ventricle or ventricles are the uh, pump, are the, uh, well, it's a pumping chamber. It's uh, atria also pump, uh, but the uh, uh, but the ventricles pump blood out of the heart. The atria just pump blood from the atria to the ventricles, and the uh, ventricles pump uh, blood to, to uh, other parts of the body. The right side pumps the oxygen blood to the lungs, the left side pumps oxygen blood to the rest of the body. It's part of the great vessels, as you mentioned. Um, Arteries in red, veins in uh, blue, and purple here. Um, so arteries transport blood away from the heart. So you have a uh, um, an artery called the pulmonary trunk that brings blood away from the right ventricle and, and brings blood to the blood. Um, the left side of the heart has the aorta. It transports blood, transport blood from the left ventricle. To the whole body. Uh, veins transport blood, blood toward the heart, vena cava, uh, turning to the right side, it brings blood back to the whole body. And the uh, pulmonary veins straight into the left side, into the left atrium. Uh, and, uh, and so those are, those are the great vessels. Um, the valves, there's four valves. Two AV valves and two semi lumen valves. The AV valves, atrial ventricular valves, are between the atria and the ventricles. So on the right side, we call the right AV valve, it's also called the tricuspid valve. On the left AV valve, it's also called the bicuspid valve. Semi lumen valves are uh, between the ventricles and the great arteries carrying blood away from the heart. Um, and there's a pulmonary semilunar valve uh, that, that blood passes from the uh, right ventricle through that into the pulmonary trunk. And then there's the aortic semilunar valve where blood travels from the left uh, ventricle uh, through that valve into the aorta. Okay. So we have, like I said, we have pulmonary and systemic circuits. And so I think the next slide shows you these pulmonary circuits, these particular circuits. So pulmonary circuits, uh, blood coming from the, from all the body, carrying the oxygen, blood uh, sending to the lungs to the oxygen. Systemic circuits getting oxygen, blood from the lungs, and sending it to all the rest of the body. So we look at these, but uh, remember, they're both linked. Um, okay, so the position of the heart right in the middle of the chest, uh, in between the, in, in between the lungs, just under the sternum. Its size is about the size of your fist. Um, 
And it made a different size. It can grow stronger and become larger. It's going to have the sophistication to pump. If you work your heart in a correct way, the days of stress, you can actually grow a much a larger and, more, and, and stronger pump. And the shape it is, well, shaped like a heart. Okay, now the pericardium. Uh, this is the lining of the heart. Remember the heart. Um, remember, remember the beginning of last semester we talked about body cavities, uh, and one of those cavities is the pericardial cavity. So your heart is in a sac called the pericardial cavity. And remember, all these body cavities are lined by serous membranes with various things. This, uh, it's a, a simple square of epithelium, and it's called the, the pericardium, lines the pericardium sac. And remember, the, the, the lining of the sac is always called the parietal, whatever, parietal pericardium. And on the surface of the heart is a very serous membrane called the visceral pericardium. And remember, every one of these um, body cavities is a visceral and parietal part. Okay. The ghost of that may heart, the heart wall. So um, from the very outside of the heart to the muscle of the heart to the lining of the uh, of the chambers of the epimyo and inner cardium, I'll show you that in the next slide. And the fibroskeleton, fibrous connective tissue that holds valves together, holds things together, and gives the heart its shape. It's true for most organs that have fibroskeleton. It gives it a shape. And the chambers, the atria, the two atria, and the two ventricles. Four chambered heart. Here is a, a depiction of the uh, uh, the uh, pulmonary and systemic circulations. Now, you, uh, since it's a cold system, you should be able to trace the blood through the heart and both systems. And you can start anywhere because it's a closed system. But usually uh, people start on the right side of the heart. So one, right side of the heart. And the right uh, ventricle pumping blood uh, through the pulmonary trunk, through the pulmonary arteries, through the lungs uh, for number two. And that's the pulmonary, both lungs, pulmonary circulation. Then blood is pumped, uh, is pumped back from the uh, heart from the lungs to the heart, number three, into the left atrium, into the left ventricle by the pulmonary veins. And then blood is pumped out of the aorta uh, to the systemic circulation uh, throughout the entire body. And then blood comes back uh, to the right side of the heart by the inferior superior inferior vena cava, back to the right ventricle, uh, back to the right atria, back to the right ventricle, and so So here's the uh, mediastinum. This is the location of the heart. Dead center, right between the lungs, under the mediastinum. It's called the mediastinum. And here's a cross-sectional view of it, right between the lungs, just uh, uh, anterior to the spinal column, and uh, that's what we'll get. Okay. Here is a, uh, a picture, picture of the uh, uh, a, a longitudinal section through the heart and showing the, uh, the pericardial sac and lines. Now, this uh, picture is a little misleading because it, it Tends to look like the, the right ventricle is longer than the left. That's not the case. Both ventricles are the same size. But the heart leans to the left because, as you can see, the heart wall here is actually called a myocardium. It's much thicker on the left than it is on the right. And that sort of makes sense, doesn't it? Because the right ventricle just has to pump blood to, to, the, uh, to the lungs. So it's a much lower pressure system. Doesn't have to have that strong of a pump. But 
the left side had to pump blood uh, to the entire body. So it had to be a stronger pump. And the blood pressure on the left side uh, uh, in a systemic circulation is a lot higher than the blood pressure in the uh, pulmonary circulation. Now here's the uh, pericardium and actually the initial pericardium divided over the fibers. Uh, uh, it's fibrous pericardium, and here's a provider of pericardium. It lines the sac. There's a part of pericardial cavity and serous fluid. And these serous membranes secrete a watery fluid so that the heart can move inside the pericardial sac and not get stuck. Right. There's a visual layer of the, of the uh, pericardium that's also known as the epicardium. And then this is what's called the myocardium, the, the actual heart muscle itself is called a myocardium, and then the lining of the chambers uh, is another um, simple squamous la uh, layer of uh, epithelium called, called the uh, endocardium. And this sim simple squamous epithelium lines your entire uh, uh, cardiovascular system. In the heart, it's called the endocardium. Okay. So, as you mentioned, we the continuous gross anatomy, the valves, the atrial ventricular valves, uh, tricuspid and bicuspid. Tricuspid between uh, uh, right atrium and right ventricle, bicuspid between um, uh, left atrium and left ventricle. And then remember the semi valves also pulmonary and aortic semi-lunar valves. All right. So flow is kept separate between um, right and left. And uh, in the same amount of blood as it goes from the right side of blood as it goes from the left. Like I said, the ventricles are the same size. It's pushed under a higher pressure on the left side uh, than the right side, but the amount of blood is the same. That's called the ventricular balance. And that has to be the case because if you have unequal pumping, you will have edema. This is a leakage of more fluid than normal from capillaries. Capillaries are the uh, vessels, are the only vessels of the cardiovascular system that are leaky. They leak. And uh, they, they have to be leak, leak to a certain degree. You don't want to leak in too much of a degree. If they, if, if, uh, more blood is pumped out of the right hand side, you have pulmonary edema, which is actually a life threatening condition. If you have more blood pumped on the left side, it's uh, left side than on the right side, then you'll have uh, edema or swelling in the, the lower extremities. Uh, and that's called edema. And then there's a coronary circulation. Uh, we, this is the uh, circula circulation that actually supplies the heart muscle itself with blood. Um, and uh, if uh, one of those uh, blood vessels is, is blocked, that's a myocardial infarction and, or a heart attack. And uh, like I said, this pump is really special and, and really uh, sophisticated. But one thing it can't do is repair itself. Uh, if you damage your heart, it has almost no regenerative capability. And more, if a heart muscle cell dies, you don't get it back. So this could happen with a more important you end up with a weakened area. If you're not killed by it, you end up with a weakened area in your heart. Because the, the uh, muscle cells that die are replaced by uh, connective tissue cells, and connective tissue cells don't interact. Okay, uh, uh, should we get to this? Oh, sure. Let's just use this, uh, this particular lecture for gross anatomy, and we're going to get into the uh, electrical aspects of the, uh, of the heart in the uh, uh, next video. So let me, let me, let me uh, end this one here, and then we'll uh, pick up the uh, uh, conduction pathway in the next uh, video. So let me. Uh, so I'll see you later.